Oh no, it's very important that obviously veterinary, veterinary students are going to have to practice on live animals and such just to get their skills. I mean, I'm not going to pay somebody to be operating on my dog or my cat or my pet without proper experience. When I was a veterinary surgical student in 2000, the practice in my veterinary school, as with many around the world, was that students would uh, practice their surgical procedures on healthy animals and then kill them at the end of the procedure. Although unfortunately not all the animals survive these typically extended surgeries. Now unsurprisingly I entered veterinary school because I wanted to become a healer rather than a killer of animals and uh, one of my student myself refused to participate in all of this killing. Uh, our reward for that was the scorn and derision, unfortunately, of uh, many of our esteemed professors and even some of our classmates who told us with uh, conviction that surgery could be learnt in no other way than by harming animals. And yet we persisted. Uh, we uh, sourced homeless cats and dogs from animal shelters and helped to sterilise them to ensure that fewer unwanted puppies and kittens would be born. And in the end we succeeded, gaining uh, about five times the surgical experience of our classmates who uh, unfortunately killed animals to obtain their degrees. And I have to say that it did feel wonderful to be uh, pre preventing unnecessary deaths by helping to prevent uh, cat and dog overpopulation rather than causing unnecessary deaths during our surgical training. I'm very pleased and proud that um, by 2005 uh, my student colleagues at all the other Australian veterinary schools uh, had successfully uh, graduated from all of those schools without uh, harming animals in their surgical training as well. In every case overcoming the strong uh, scepticism of many of their professors and classmates who once again claim that surgery could be taught in no other way than by killing animals. In my mind I don't think that's proper training for the vet. The vet hasn't gone through proper training. Traditionally, students have been taught scientific concepts uh, in subjects like physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, pharmacology, and parasitology, uh, partly by conducting harmful experiments on animals and then often killing them at the end of the procedures, or by uh, dissecting animals which have been killed just for the purposes of teaching. However, fortunately, in many uh, veterinary schools, and biological science faculties and university courses around the world, humane teaching methods have been introduced in the last couple of decades. There are now hundreds, even thousands of these methods uh, which exist and which are included in the main databases uh, relating to humane teaching methods. it's important that they've worked on a, a terminal surgery because that, that shows that they are really fully qualified to work on my dog. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be happy if I knew that the vet hadn't done terminal surgery before. I know it's not ideal but isn't it essential for a vet to understand um, a dog or cat's health in order for them to be able to treat my own animal because I'd want to ensure that a vet understood every aspect of my dog's health and they can probably only do that via experimentation on actual animals. Humane teaching methods include things like high quality video clips or computer simulations or professionally conducted dissections or even animal experiments. Uh, they include uh, non-invasive self-experimentation on oneself or one's fellow students. They include the use of body parts or cadavers obtained from animals uh, that have been euthanised for medical reasons and donated for teaching purposes in veterinary teaching hospitals or that have died naturally or in accidents and these are called ethically sourced cadavers and so on. So there are now literally thousands of these uh, humane teaching methods which are listed in uh, humane education databases and they've been successfully introduced into a variety of faculties and university courses around the world. Where they have been introduced, uh, often the faculty members have actually conducted studies of these students and their learning outcomes to see whether the new method compares favourably with the old method or not. And so there are now over 30 of these educational studies which have been published in the relevant uh, academic journals. And essentially the evidence uh, indicates that around about 10% of these uh, studies overall have demonstrated that the new humane alternative uh, did not produce learning outcomes that uh, were as good as those reliant on traditional harmful animal use. But in around about 90% of cases, uh, the humane alternatives produced learning outcomes which were at least as good and in fact in around about a third of cases actually better than the traditional methods involving harmful animal use. 
So that's what the evidence tells us. Well-designed humane teaching methods uh, usually perform at least as well and quite often better than methods that uh, rely upon harmful animal use. And there are good reasons for that. Students are more able to repeat procedures where necessary, more able to customise them to their individual needs. Sometimes things like computer simulations have been made available via the internet so that students can uh, revise uh, at home before examinations and things like that. So the learning experience is much more customisable to the student's individual learning needs and all the distractions associated with live animal use uh, are eliminated. So students uh, surveys have reported that students involved in uh, highly invasive uh, animal experiments which has been common in uh, subjects like physiology are often so distracted by the fact that their animals are being seriously harmed and by their duty to try to keep their animals alive and successfully anaesthetized that they're not able to actually concentrate on the physiological concepts that they're trying to learn. So it's a very distracting experience. It's a highly stressful experience and the stress is known to interfere with um, finer cognitive, cognitive processes such as those involved in learning and memory. So uh, the learning experience can be uh, substantially hampered by the uh, live animal laboratories.